ladies and gentlemen. So I've got another AI video for you because that went so well last time. First, a little backstory, a little lore update. So I'm from Ohio, more specifically Cincinnati. About four months ago, I moved to Boston for an internship. This was great and all, but I quickly learned that Massachusetts drivers are maniacs. In fact, Boston is consistently ranked the worst place in the country to drive. It seems like all drivers have zero respect for red lights, and also there's these things called rotaries, and it's just a circle where zero traffic laws apply. Welcome to the Memorial Avenue Rotary. There were more than 40 car crashes there between 2011 and 2013, but as traffic has increased over the years, so has car accidents and rotaries. Either way, after dealing with all this traffic, I was wondering, is there a way we can leverage the strengths of AI to improve these types of situations? Now, we obviously can't change people's driving habits with AI because we can't control people yet. However, we can cut down on a lot of the other types of traffic that are generated from changing traffic patterns and lights and things like that. For this project, I made an AI that controls a standard four-way traffic light that has each direction having a left turn light. This is probably the most common type of intersection beyond just a normal four-way stop sign. So to start off, I need to actually build the intersection. The idea is great and everything, but if you can't build it, then you're kind of toast. To build this, I'm using Pygame, which is in Python. Um, you could honestly use anything, but this is just what I know, so that's what I went with. With the intersection built, I just need to add the traffic lights. Each direction is a traffic light that has your standard green, yellow, red, as well as a left turn arrow. I'm sure you've all seen these traffic lights before, and uh, unfun fact, they are actually called doghouse style traffic lights. You can use that one next time you're in a, an awkward traffic light conversation with someone. This type of traffic light in each direction means that there are 10 possible options for the AI to choose from. With that, the intersection is basically built and you just gotta kind of slap some cars in there and you're good to go, right? Uh, no, so plot twist, it actually took forever and it was a lot. Maybe that's just because I suck at coding, but just figuring out how to store all the data of which cars are where, where they're going next, and then just how to have them avoid other cars and also stop if there's an obstacle in front of them. Basically, to make each of them like a self-driving car, like the world's worst simple self-driving car. And it's by no means perfect, so you might see some cars crashing into each other or running over top of each other or running a red light on accident just because it missed something. But overall, it's pretty good. I'll spare you the rest of the details because honestly, I didn't realize how complicated intersections can be. Uh, you know that feeling like when you first start driving and just going through a normal intersection seems like you're you know, navigating a destroyer group through the street of Hormuz? It was kind of like that. You, there, there's a lot of stuff going on that you take for granted when you're just normally driving. And there's a million ways this simulation could be made even more accurate or realistic. You could add in pedestrians, you could add in what happens if there's a crash, you could add in all sorts of stuff. One thing I did add in because I thought it was important is changing traffic patterns. So in real life, there's obviously not constant traffic coming from all four directions. So I actually mapped the percent chance of a car spawning in at different times to a sine wave. That means that throughout the simulation time, different directions will have different likelihoods of cars spawning in. So that means that the AI actually has to figure out that and plan for when cars are coming from which direction and kind of react accordingly. With the simulation built, all I had to do was kind of hand over the control of changing the traffic light to the neural net. And from there, it was pretty easy actually. For a neural net to actually improve, it needs feedback on how it's doing. So I needed to create some type of scoring system to rank different neural net configurations so that I could choose the best. To do this, I actually kind of created like a, a road rage value. Um, so for every time step that a car is waiting, it'll just add one to this value. So as more cars are held up and for longer, this road rage value is going to increase. I can then take the inverse of that value, which creates a score that goes up as the neural nets get better. If anyone's actually interested in the specifics of the AI, <coughs> Nerds. I'm using the Python Neat library, which is a really good tool. Um, it's super easy to implement. And as the name says, it's in Python, which is what the rest of this is already in. So it all makes it work nice and easy. The neural net has 18 inputs, 10 outputs, two hidden layers, which probably could have been one and maybe even zero, but I just added a bin just in case, which probably isn't a good idea, but it's okay. And then a tan H activation function. So now I can just let it go on its own and train itself. And after about a week, probably, because my code is horribly inefficient, we should have a working 
AI streetlight. After I had stopped the training, it was time to dive into the recorded data. By plotting the max score of each generation, you can see that the AI initially learns a lot, but then plateaus. This data initially appears pretty noisy, but if you run a 20 generation running average through it, the trend appears. It would appear that the bulk of the learning is done between generations 0 and 100, but to better illustrate how much the AI has learned, I want to play for you side by side the 0th generation alongside the best scoring generation, which was generation 175. In this simulation, the AI was clearly able to learn a lot, and it very effectively reduced traffic. So I think something like this could be somewhat applicable in the real world. Obviously some things would need to be changed because traffic lights don't have access to all the data that I fed this AI. With newer intersections having more and more sensing technology, such as cameras and, and sensors embedded in the pavement, I think we're getting to a point where we have enough data to send to an AI and see if it can improve the traffic flow through the intersection. I do want to quickly point out that it does appear that other people are working on this. There's a lot of papers and articles out there right now proposing this idea and it appears it's actually been implemented in some specific areas, but I think it's something that needs to be implemented more wide scale. Hopefully some of you guys actually enjoyed this video. It uh, took me forever to put together and get everything finally together just because I've been busy with other stuff. But um, I do plan on going back to more like hardware related projects soon. So stay tuned for that and I will uh, see you in the next one. Thank you.